All right, in the last video, we learned how to make non-destructive overlay layers to dodge and burn, create cast shadows, create, you know, special effects, or not special effects, but lights and darks that don't actually affect the original pixels. So now that we have that, how can we adjust the lighting on the character where it doesn't also affect the background? So the way we do that is we take our creature layer and we duplicate that. Then we use the magic wand. We turn off contiguous and we select the empty space around our creature. Remember the computers or the magic wand's very good at selecting empty space. I have a one pixel feather, which is nice, um, but you don't need much of a feather at all. Now I'm going to invert that selection. So it instead selects inside my creature. So I go to select and inverse. And now on that layer, I have a selection that's just a perfect cookie cutter of my creature silhouette. Remember, this is a duplicate of my creature layer. And now I'm going to fill that shape with middle gray. And you can already see that there is some dodging and burning on top of that from other layers. So what I can do is I can move that layer up above the other layers. What do I do with this layer to make it so I can dodge and burn it? And so it doesn't affect anything else. I change it to overlay mode. So it's like it's not even there. But now if I dodge and burn on this layer, I can burn, 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 burn. But notice it's not going to affect the background at all. Whereas if I burn on this layer, it will affect the background. So here is on my, my full dodge burn layer. I burn, 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 and it affects everything very slowly because I'm having it at a 32% opacity. But here, I can burn that leg all the way to black if I want. And notice it won't ever touch the background because I've shaped that non-destructive layer to match the shape of my creature. So this is a great way to kind of customize the lighting. And now we're trying to make the creature's lighting fit this environment. It's not about having kind of a clean, clean lighting on all parts of the creature like we did for assignment two. So you can really play up on this non-destructive character creature or character dodge burn layer. You can really play up the lighting. And then if it's too much, you can always just take down its opacity. These are just photo retouching tools within PhotoP. The dodge, the burn, the overlays. And I always tend to overdo it. And that's okay, as long as you're not actually hurting your pixels. So there I go, overdoing it. Big difference. <laughs> and then I can just take my opacity down on it, or I can erase away from it. Until it feels more appropriate. Now in the same way, I, I, all I've done is burn so far. I can also dodge. Dodge does highlights. Burning darkens. If I'm using my tablet, I want to make it pressure sensitive for the brush. And I can do a little bit of dodging just at the top of my character so that its back is catching the light more. Its snout is a little bit brighter. That really changes the angle of the light, and that's what we're asked to do. And then I can also do a little bit of dodging. On my background. 
overlay layer. You know where I think it might need it. Yeah, I think there. A little burning. Fix little things with these french fries. We also have tools like clone stamp for any kind of spot corrections you might need. In this case, I'm not going to do an over a new layer for clone stamp. I'm just going to do it within the layer. I'm going to have it based on the current layer. I'm just going to extend this french fry a little bit. It's a little too much got erased from it. So you can do little spot corrections this way with clone stamp. As long as you're careful with it. You have control of every pixel with these programs. All right. Now, remember how we added texture fills for atmosphere to improve our landscape? Now I'm going to use a texture fill. And I'm going to make like steam coming out of his mouth, right? Make it look like he's breathing, that he's living in this cotton candy filled environment. And I might even try playing with the hue saturation of that texture fill that I already have. Because everything's getting very pink. So what if I push it in a new direction? Does it help? Does it hurt? Hard to say. It's all subtle because this is, you know, a low opacity. It's an 8%. But I just change it to this kind of toxic green, this texture fill. <laughs> but that helps give a little bit more variation, I think, to the setting. Maybe the green was too far. Yeah, I actually like it. Okay, so now I see this little bit of the pizza on my background that looks really yellow. And I want to fix that. So there's dodge and burn, but always remember there's also sponge tool if you're affecting the pixels directly. I do that at less than 30, and I'm going to desaturate with a big soft brush. So it's just remembering these tools. I don't need to worry about my creature because this is on a layer behind it, but I'm just going to take out the saturation of that yellow because it's distracting on that pizza behind. I don't want to install software. Just cancel. All right. So, how do I use these texture fills for my creature to show breath? Well, I'm just going to steal some. I'll steal it from this heaven texture. And I'm just going to get a chunk of it. It's kind of smoke coming out of a mouth. Then I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to move it up above my creature. Maybe up above everything, just so I can see it clearly. And then take it to 100% opacity. Okay, there it is. Basically just a gray cloud, right? Now I'm going to use filter and blur, Gaussian blur, to soften its edges, just like I did with the, the cast shadow. Until it looks just like vapor that, that my creature is smoking. 
or <laughs> exhaling. And I can play with the levels of it and brighten it or darken it. I'll brighten it just slightly. I can play with the color balance of it in the mid-tones. It's going to make a big impact. And whether it goes more green or more pink, I think my creature is going to have more of that kind of greenish. He's kind of sulfurous in his tummy. Maybe a little bit of yellow. There's not a lot of difference in highlights and shadows in a texture overlay, texture fill, but you can play with it. And then I can go to hue saturation, see if that, if it needs to be desaturated, right? Or if it needs to just change in its spectrum a little bit. And I just want it slightly different than what's around it. All right, good. So that's better than this, which is where it was. I went through levels, color balance, hue saturation, always in that order. Now I can take down its opacity, but maybe not. Maybe I keep it up at full opacity and I just erase away from it. Because I want this kind of trail of breath kind of centered around my creature's mouth and head, and then it kind of dissipates as it gets further away. But I want it to be somewhat directional. So this is a way that even you can use atmosphere to help integrate your creature into the environment. Now this could just as easily be coming from the other end of the creature, right? Producing methane or some other, you know, fanciful byproduct gas. But let's see, what does it look like without it? it looks like that. With it, maybe a little heavy-handed. I could always take its opacity down. But it helps. Even if it's kind of subconscious how it helps. If I want to use it again, I can just duplicate it. Command J, and then I can move it, transform it. You know, option Command T to get to that free transform. And I can use this kind of bluish green cloud to maybe separate, do the back end of my creature, but kind of separate it from the background. Like so. can push it over my creature and then just erase away so much of it with my soft brush. Just have little traces of it. So that's using atmosphere all on their own layers. Can I control it? Maybe I want to use that again. Command J and then bring it down to the lower part of the composition. Down here. Just to give that kind of low lying mist. I can even grow it with Option Command T. Stretch it across. Grow it big. This is a subtle mist just settling down. But it goes behind the french fries. So I'll really dim that. All right. Now the last thing I'll do is I'll take my creature And I'll make a duplicate of it, and I'll put it up above everything as though it's not affected by any of it. And then I'll take my opacity and just bring it down. Because I, I tend to overdo things. So then I can see, what if I bring back my original creature, you know, before, just after I adjusted it, 
But before I did all this dodging and burning and 